Okay guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about heating and lighting bioactive enclosures. Now when you're doing this, it is important to remember that you must cater to the needs of the animal that you're trying to keep in the enclosure, but with the plants and that, um, there are some extra things to take into consideration. So in today's video I'm going to try and explain those things and what I found works best for me. So if you've made a bioactive enclosure for your reptile, then basically you're probably doing it because you want to make the most natural setup possible for them. Now, as part of this, I feel that providing ultraviolet lighting really is vital because, well, I'm not going to get fully into it now, but essentially every animal in the wild, um, apart from the odd couple, but let's just ignore those for now, does get exposure to ultraviolet light. And so in captivity, we really ought to provide that for our animals. However, ultraviolet lighting can be pretty bad for plants in a closed environment. Obviously outside in the sunshine there's lots of UV, but in different places around the world the strength of that UV that's hitting the plants will be different and that is something that you do have to bear in mind when you're creating a bioactive enclosure. So in my experience, succulent plants like uh, the famous snake plant and echeverias they do seem to do quite well, grown under intense UV lighting. I did used to have um, two of those growing right here, underneath the UVB roll for my leopard gecko. However, they did get eaten by insects, but that's another story. Um, whereas other plants, on the other hand, do not grow well at all. So if we take a look around here in my crested gecko's enclosure, you can kind of see that there are lots of pale and faded leaves. They're all around really, even on some of the different types of plants back there. And that is because of the UV bulb that I did have above here. Right on top here, I did have a compact fluorescent UVB bulb. I've now swapped that out for a linear one. And this is what I've found. I've found that since changing to this linear bulb, the plants haven't burnt anywhere near as much as they did with the compact one. So that is definitely something that I would recommend doing, um, getting a linear bulb over a compact one, just so that your plants don't burn. Now, the linear bulbs are actually advantageous to your animals as well, because they provide a nice even beam of light right across the enclosure, as opposed to a compact, which is focusing all of the light right in one shallow beam. So it's much better for the animal to shuffle in and out of the light and choose how much exposure it gets. And again, because it's over a wide area, it's not too tightly focused on the plants, so it's not going to burn them as much. Now, in some cases, it is absolutely essential to provide high output light for the plants themselves. Now, in my experience, succulents don't tend to need this at all. Because they don't get burnt by UV light, you can put them really close to them and they'll use the light from those just fine to grow. And they don't grow that fast anyway, so it's not like they need lots of energy from light. However, bromeliads, as you see in here, do tend to need um, quite high lighting, and that's because of how they grow in the wild. So in order to provide high lighting for my plants that's not going to burn them, I like to use the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED. Now, a few notes about this bulb. It is absolutely essential that you keep the airflow around it high. That's why I've got it in a ceramic socket and not like a normal canopy, because they need to remain relatively cool, and the bulbs themselves give, give out quite a lot of heat. So you definitely want to prolong the life of these as much as you can because they are quite expensive. And really you want to go for the biggest one that you can get. I've got the tiny one at the minute, the 9 watt one. Although I am looking to improve that and get the 22 watt one so that my plants really can flourish. As I said, however, succulents do grow just fine under UV bulbs, and I'm sure that there's some other plants that you could get to do the same. So over my leopard gecko's tank, I never bothered putting a jungle dawn, and it just had the compact fluorescent UV over here, and the succulents down there were growing really well until the bugs hit them. So the last point to make regarding plants is to do with heating. And as you can see here, the devil's ivy or pothos really is very burnt. And that is because it did have a heat lamp right up here. So as soon as this plant started growing towards the heat lamp, it just completely burnt. And that really is something to keep in mind. So obviously you've got to provide heat for your animals. But when you do, just bear in mind where you're going to put the plants in the enclosure. Because if you stick them right underneath like a bearded dragon's heater, then the plants just aren't going to grow at all. 
Now, on that point, I did just say that you've got to make sure that you give the right heating to the animal and not just look at the plants, really. So you may be wondering why I've removed the heat bulb from up here. Well, at the minute, we are in a kind of major heat wave, so I'm not really worried about it becoming too cool for a crested gecko, which they don't really need that high temperatures anyway. And the heat given off by the jungle dawn is actually achieving a basking spot of about 30 degrees right under it. So that should be just fine for him. And then once I've got the larger jungle dawn over here spanning right across the back, that'll be plenty of heat for him. So in terms of the animals themselves, the most important thing in my opinion, aside from providing UV lighting, is to ensure that you follow the rules of the light and shade method. Now this is a relatively new but very very simple concept which states that the heating and lighting in an enclosure should all be situated at the same sort of point and then that trails off into cool dark regions for the rest of the enclosure. So you can see from a leopard gecko here I've got the UV coming down right on this rock and back there up at the top I do also have his heat lamp. These are at the same end of the enclosure so that when my leopard gecko comes out to bask on his rock, which he does about two or three times a day, even though some people say that leopard geckos won't bask, they really do. But anyway, that's beside the point slightly. So he can go there and choose to be nice and warm and also in high UV exposure. But then he can also crawl away to the darker side of the enclosure where it's cooler as well as darker as it would be in the wild. By providing light in this fashion, as well as heating, you are ensuring that your animal can self-regulate and maintain optimal body conditions in exactly the way as they have evolved to do over millions of years in the wild. And really, if you've done that, as well as created a bioactive setup, that is basically as close as we can get with current science to maintaining our animals in the same way as they would do naturally. So on that note, that pretty much concludes this video. Now, I do thank you for reaching the end of this video, and if you would like to give this video a like or leave a comment, then that would really help me out. And you could also help me out by checking my last upload. I'll leave a little link in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now. Um, that was a video made in celebration of 1,000 subscribers, and if you could take part in the competition, the details for it are in that video then that would really help out the channel a lot. So again, I thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.